It's all about the behind the scenes. Figuring okay. Out all right. All right. Here it goes. POC. Okay. I actually had nothing prepared today, and I just barely wrote some stuff down. Uh, and I didn't know there was going to be kids here, so I actually had to clean my stuff up some. So, <laughs> bear with me, please. Okay, first of all, I want to talk about the Roseanne cancellation. Okay, I can actually see why uh, Ernie was pissed off about what Roseanne said, and I was going to say what she said, but I can't because the kids are here. And so, uh, But it always seemed to be that... Uh, you know, why did they cancel the show? I mean, she was going to go in for an operation. They could, could have just killed her character off and continued it as, as the honors. I think that would have worked. Okay. Uh, let's see. I hope this isn't over the edge, but... Uh, okay, uh, shoot. I can't remember the name of the thing. It's a, a group called the Wing Nuts. They're protesting because that they, they say that the outdoors... Is inhospitable to gay people? And I said, that's insane. I mean, the outdoors is inhospitable to everybody. That's what makes it the outdoors, the whole idea. I mean, you start off with na nature, it ceases to be nature. And secondly, I think that's just really offensive to gay people because I've known some, I've had some gay friends and, uh, you know what? Some of them are pretty rough and tumble, and uh, I, I, I could see them being actually uh, offended by the idea that you think that they have to be, have some kind of uh, accommodation made for them. Okay, let's see. I'd uh, like to kind of like point out something about Alice in Wonderland. Okay, uh, I, I, I hate the remakes because they always miss the point that Alice in Wonderland was actually two stories. One story was uh, down the uh, rabbit hole, the other story was through the looking glass, and they actually had two different uh, sets of rules. In down the rabbit hole, she changed shapes and sizes. In through the looking glass, she remained the same, but everything else changed shapes and sizes. And, uh, Let's see. This is where it gets tricky, man, because <laughs> I had this set up. And uh, I want to talk about uh, the black exploitation, uh, those movies from the 70s. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of you don't remember them, but uh, you've probably seen like some of the, these remakes. And I really hate those remakes because they missed the whole kind of uh, intent. Because in these black exploitation movies, it was kind of like Alice in Wonderland, that they had this whole set of uh, laws in place. And uh, so all these black people were the good guys. And there was this one black guy, his name, we'll call him Mr. Blackman. And uh, then uh, th there was the main bad guy, and we'll call him Mr. Fighty. And uh, Mr. Blackman had uh, been in Vietnam, and uh, he made friends with this white guy, we'll call him Mr. White Boy. Now, now, Mr. White Boy was actually a bad guy at first, but then he became friends with black men, and now he's the one righteous white man in the movie. Okay, so, uh, then, uh, all these movies had the, the same basic plot, okay? So Mr. Blackman comes back, he sees that everything's gone bad, and that Mr. Fighty is trying to take over and wipe out the black race. And uh, he has a friend that's called Ephialtes. And Ephialtes had uh, grown up with black men. But uh, Ephialtes was actually a bad guy, even though he was one of the black people. And so they would go and... Uh, Let's see. <clears throat> so they're trying to uh, fight against Mr. Fighty. And uh, so as it goes along, Mr. Uh, Black Man uh, comes up with these plans and uh, he, uh, he uh, 
He defeats, he starts to defeat Mr. Feige. But then all of a sudden, Ephialtes, the bad black guy, betrays black men, and he gets white boy killed. And then Mr. Black Man just loses his mind and he's like, No! And then he goes, This black man ain't gonna take it from fighting no more. And so then that's when he goes all crazy and he just kills uh, fight, uh, Mr. Feige and uh, that's pretty much the end of the movie. Okay, and the really cool part about that was that when I was a kid, I mean, they, they showed it in, you know, TV and stuff that it was just a bunch of black people that were going to see that. No, that was not the truth. I mean, there was white guys and there was Mexicans and there was black people, of course, going and seeing these movies. And so you see this, uh, like, little five-foot-tall, blue-eyed, light-skinned uh, white guy walk out and it go... This black man ain't gonna take it no more. And then he punched this big, uh, you know, not really punch him, but pretend to punch the seven foot black guy who had pretended to be Mr. Whitey. And he, then the, the seven foot black guy who pretended to be Mr. Whitey would like fall down and pretend like he was dead. And you know, it was, it was kind of cool because, uh, you know, I mean, even though it was kind of racist, it was really integrated when you went to the theater. Okay, uh, now that kind of brings me to like uh, Amos and Andy. Now, Amos and Andy had gotten canceled in TV. And uh, it was really kind of insane because uh, it had started as a stage production, became a radio show, and then became a television show. So, uh, the <laughs> When, when people are watching the game and they're going, oh, it really kind of kills my ass. <laughs> oh, that's better. Keep that up. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, the, the problem is that uh, they renamed the characters Ralph and Norton and then called the show The Honeymooners. And that show became a hit. I mean, it was the same exact plot as Amos and Andy. Uh, and the only thing that they had actually done that the people who protested that was to put a lot of black people out of, uh, <laughs> out of, uh, work. And, uh, that was kind of like, uh, with, uh, Tarzan and Jungle Jim. And Jungle Jim, I don't know if anybody ever seen that before. That was from the, uh, 1950s. And the funny thing about that was that the, the good black people were played by actual black people, but when they had a bad black guy, it was a guy who was painted black, a white guy who was painted black, and his, his makeup would always run off and, and rub off. And uh, it, it, if you ever saw it, it was just really funny to watch. Okay, and uh, let's see. Oh, I want to talk about cheating at sports, too. Because, uh, actually, I'm not an athlete. I can't tell if you can tell by looking at me. Uh, but uh, how I would uh, win things was actually by cheating. And, uh, like, uh, you know, I've talked about how I used to play pool. And so, like, uh, I used to like to do things like paint the apple red, you know, paint uh, apples white and switch them up for baseballs. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that, but that's really cool. And uh, I had I had gotten the credit one time for something, and it was really cool, and I have no idea how these people pulled this off. But they had put silicone over a basketball net. And so when the guy threw the basketball was should have been all net, it's that it was all set up and it bounced right off. <laughs> okay, you know what? You know what you've got to give me a minute? I'm going to end it right here. Okay, thanks.